so mad at her. I cannot believe she did that. But only a few days after, my mom sent, uh, sent a letter to her. I received a card in the mail. Um, she said that she had actually cried reading the letter and that no one had ever made her feel so appreciated before. The day she received my letter, she had to go in for some test for cancer. She had been down all day, and after reading my letter, she went to the doctors thinking positively. I just wanted to thank you for signing this paper because I truly did not think that it would mean anything. After hearing back from her, it makes me feel like a better person. You can't make this stuff up. No. Although, not since students would if they could. <laughs> And other things, you know, that people worry about is academic achievement. How can we help, you know, the children learn better, you know, learn more effectively? So uh, we did this, uh, this study uh, with a uh, uh, student, you know, long-term study. So at the uh, beginning of the academic year, it's like, you know, the fifth, sixth, and seventh grader. They filled out, the, you know, character strength measure, and then we follow them, you know, at the end of the school year, and we look at the actual their, you know, uh, uh, grade, how much, you know, the, uh, 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 gain in their academic achievements. Um, we also measure their IQ score. So we actually able to control the IQ score. So above beyond the IQ, the perseverance and love and gratitude, that predicts how much academic gain they would have a year later. And this is very important because, I mean, um, a lot of times people think that learning is happening in our head. Learning is intellectual. But what we learn is that learning is not just intellect, it's also relationship. We learn through our relationship to our teacher, we learn our relationship to our, our classmates and people around us. So um, in some sense, you know, uh, perseverance does not really surprise you because you, know, you have to work hard at it for love and gratitude. Who thought that the child who actually you know, loving and grateful, they also do better at school. And so if we uh, uh, you know, worry about academic achievement, not just you know, uh, um, you know, keep you know, pounding their head with all these math formulas and everything else, we also start to build the character. Because that will not only lead to academic gains, but in order to build a better person. Um, the next series of studies we've done looked at work satisfaction, and there's a great interest, as you know, in you know, strengths and, and work and work satisfaction. And across, oh, dozens and dozens of different jobs, we find the same strengths are the, ro ro the two robust predictors of whether you like your job. It's zest and it's hope. End of story. There are some subtleties, but if you, you want to talk about, you know, what's really important, zest and hope. And I don't, it's probably not legal to use this information in a job interview, uh, but, but, but if you could, and I were hiring people, and somebody trudges in, uh, I didn't think I'd get here today, I go, hey, a very interesting resume, next. I want somebody with a, a spring in their step and uh, you know, their, eye, their, eye, their eye toward the future, zest and hope. Uh, the next study we did, we've been fortunate enough to work with colleagues at the United States Military Academy. Study we did a couple of years ago, we gave our VIA instrument to the uh, entire uh, uh, entering class of cadets the first week they were there. And you got to understand at the military academy, they're in the service day one. They get their head shaved, they take an oath, and they take the via. That's, that's the way you get mustered in. And a year later, um, they, we, we got ratings from their, their commanding officers of their, their effectiveness as leaders. Because that's what the USMA is all about, is, is producing leaders. And we looked at the data, and I'm an idiot. I was never in the service. I'm an idiot. And I said this really naive thing to the people we were working with. Gee, who would have thunk, said I, that the, the strength of love would be the, the strongest predictor of, of military leadership? And the colonel I said it to just looked at me with pity. And he goes, and tell me, Dr. Peterson, what part of the band of brothers do you not get? And I said, I guess I don't get any of it, but I, I, stand, I stand corrected. And furthermore, I don't think it's just about the military. Other people matter in all, in all, in all venues. Uh, Gandhi uh, once said that at one time, uh, leadership meant muscle. Now he's getting along with other people. Um, in Japan, we actually interviewed even the fire fires in Philadelphia. 
we ask them, how do we actually like you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, talk to the buyer? Because my, you know, my buddies, so you know, my brothers. So the, 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 the concept of love and relationship is actually come up. Cuts across something. everything, even the United States Senate. <laughs> <laughs> And another interesting question is actually because you know, uh, we are concerned about next generation and educating you know, uh, uh, young people. You know, what makes a good teacher? You know, teacher effectiveness. You know, this is because it has been in, uh, uh, you know, the concern for not just the United States but many other countries. And the, um, so we, we wanted to study you know, whether there's any you know, a relationship uh, between teacher effectiveness and character strength of the teacher. So what we did was. Uh, um, we, we collaborated with the Teach for America. So these are brand new teachers just got out of actually college and who, you know, who want to actually serve in an inner city school. So they, uh, they put out our campus strength measures and then we follow them in a year and two years later. And in this case, this was actually, you know, uh, you know uh, we were very clever. Rather than we uh, measure their own record of, you know, how their, you know, the students are doing, we actually look at the, um, academic gain of the student who are taught by these teachers on standardized test score. So some people might think they're like, you know, the teacher who are in the fun and you know, a dad, they might actually give them good grades. No, we look at the academic gain in standardized score of students who are taught by these specific teachers. What we found was vast humor, social intelligence. If a teacher has these character strengths, their children learn better, their students learn better, significantly better. I mean, if you think about, like, it should be surprising. I mean, think about teachers who can, who have passion about what they are teaching, and a teacher who can actually deliver the uh, mm -hmm. academic yeah, material in a fun and engaging way, and teachers also can read each student where they are, what their needs are, and able to accommodate. That's what makes a good teacher. Yeah, humor does not mean stand-up comedy. It means being playful. And somebody can check me on this, but it seemed, but I was once told that the word campus in Latin means playground. And shouldn't we be playful with ideas? And the answer is, of course, we should. And I've been very interested in actually this question of what makes a good teacher. Um, so. Um, Oh, by the way, these are not my, my own child, but I was her teacher for one day. Um, so uh, you know, uh, I even actually asked you know, people you know, to uh, uh, nominate a good teacher. <coughs> these are uh, from actually college students. Um, my seventh grade regional math teacher, Ms. Amandini, she made the learning so much fun. Every day we came into the class, she would have some sort of fun fact or a story to tell us. It made this a uh, um, it made the class less serious, which I liked. Also, she actually cared whether or not we did well in the class. Most teachers left it up to students at how well they would succeed in the class. Mrs. Mundini made us do well. There was no other option. It was nice to have a teacher who cared, and if I ever had a problem, I could go to her. I'm still in contact with her ever so often. I was uh, never the best at math. Honestly, I hate math. I was very worried about not passing the class and having to do it, having to do it over again. She assured me that I was doing fine and that I actually was very good at math. All I needed was a little confidence. I passed that test with the flying colors. I think Mrs. Mondini helped give me the attitude of, yes, I can do this if I try. I learned that. No subject is impossible. You just need, need to put little time and effort into it. I mean, the, um, the student after student, the report, you know, their favorite teachers about someone who are really passionate, uh, the word in passion, dedicate, and filled with the vigor, don't even begin to describe my, you know, um, the teacher, her love for what she did and the English language. Again, and it was good to find out those you know, uh, uh, data, but it was also really wonderful to actually find out uh, the, you know, that match it to the actual real, real story. But I really have to read this if we're running out of time. Because I think this is really tell us about, we are here to actually try to uh, find out how can we actually build a new